Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today we're going to talk safety. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So as you're probably aware by now, I get my hands on quite a few budget 3D printer kits, if you may, uh, mostly coming from China. For the most part, they print really well. For the lesser part, they're very easy to put together. They, they are quite attractive to a lot of prospective buyers who do not wish to spend too much on 3D printer kit. A lot of you have asked me, what are the essential things I should upgrade when I get my ANET, for example? So I decided that I need to make a video and tell you guys the three essential things you should install once you have put your printer together and you start printing. For that example, I'm going to use the ANET A6, which is right next to me. Now the ANET is a good printer. It's a very popular company and the A6 is starting to grow in the community more than in the A8. But for this particular exercise, both printers have the same electronics, pretty much same everything. So I figured might as well use this as my test subject. Now, while for the most part, these printers are actually really good, they do fall short on a few aspects of the printer. Now, you've seen me deal with power supplies that throw the electricity off, warped part, missing instructions or incomplete instructions, missing part. It's something you come to expect out of certain kits. However, there is one important thing which most of them lack, and that is safety. Now, we've been hearing a lot on the media about printers causing fires. While I don't know the circumstances of those cases and how the fire happened, I can only make assumptions, and assumptions based on what I see in the community, what I hear, what people ask me about, and the photos I have seen. So I've decided to tackle the safety issue the new way, by sharing what I do to, um, a printer which requires that additional layer of safety. Now I need to specify a disclaimer before we go on and that is I am in no way shape or form a qualified or anywhere to being close to qualified as an electrician. Everything I did here I did based on the articles I have read, the community on Facebook and any other place online and the little bit of knowledge I have of electronics. So if you do attempt any of these mods, please be aware that you're doing this at your own risk. Now, having that said and gotten out of the way, we can get to the fun stuff. As you can see here, the ANET A6 is actually in fairly clean condition. You have the cable management, which is nice and tidy. And that is for many reasons. One, it's my OCD. Secondly, it's because I did a few upgrades to it, both 3D printed and also electrical, just to make it a bit cleaner. Now, the first thing you will notice is that I have two 3D printed parts. And that is an enclosure for the uh, main board and which also houses a MOSFET and also the enclosure for the power supply. The first electrical or safety upgrade you should do lies in the heat bed. Now the heat bed is probably one of the worst parts about safety that tends to come across quite a lot. And the reason for that is the ANET and a lot of other Chinese kits come with very low quality connectors which are uh, attached to the heat bed. And the problem is that with a bit of wiggle, they start shorting out. And what happens is it starts melting the plastic around the connector, resulting in either it melting fire or possibly once again, shorting, melting or fire on the uh, main board side. So what I do, the first thing I always do is solder the wires directly to the heat bed. Now this is in no way complicated. All you need is soldering iron, pair of pliers, and some solder. And while at it, I would suggest you also increase the gauge of the wires which pass the electricity to the heat bed. In order to do so, all you have to do is simply grab a pair of pliers and start pulling out the pins of the connector one by one through uh, with, while desoldering them. Once that's done, put a bit of solder on just so it has more adhesion, more contact area, grab the wires and solder them on directly. 
Now, the next thing you want to do ideally is upgrade the power supply. The ANETs or most of these kits come with a 12 volt, 20 amp or less power supply. I would highly recommend you get something with at least 30 watt and also that has a cooling fan on it and that keeps it cool under a heavy load. Once you get that, the next step is to print a cover for the power supply and install a power switch. Now, not only does this make it easier for you to switch on and switch off the printer and carry it around without cables, it is also fused. So you have that extra layer of safety should it short out. It wires directly into the power supply where you would normally power the light neutral and earth and in order to wire the socket itself I'll put a picture of it and you can see it. It is very easy all you need to do is either solder it or use connectors to just plug in the wires securely. Now one of the most popular questions I get is what is a MOSFET? The second most popular question I get is how do I install a MOSFET? I don't know what a MOSFET does and I'm going to be completely honest. In terms of technical terms I could not figure it out. I do not understand that. So during a live stream I asked someone could someone please in layman's terms describe to me what a MOSFET is or does? And one of the users sent me this pictorial and it makes it very easy to understand. The main board is the little guy, the MOSFET is the big guy. And rather than the little guy having to carry the big load to power the heat bed, it asks the big guy, could you do that for me? Because the big guy can handle it much more easy. And that is what it is. A MOSFET is a way for sharing the load and it carrying the bigger load to power the heat bed because that is what takes the most load out of the main board. And the only connection in between the two is a little control wire which tells the MOSFET now's the time to power up the heat bed and now is the time to power it off. Now wiring the MOSFET is fairly easy. All you have to do is instead of connecting the heat bed directly to the main board, you grab the two main wires which power it and install it in the MOSFET on the outlets where it says hotbed. The other two uh, outlets are for the power supply. So you can either grab another couple of wires and plug them in directly to a different outlet on the power supply, or you can splice the wire that is going into the main board and have two wires coming out of it and into the MOSFET. This little wire right here simply goes into the main board where you would normally install the heat bed wires. And that is simply the control. It is thin for a reason because there is no strain going through it. This is just the control wire which tells the MOSFET when it should be on, where it should be off. Once you're using the heat bed, you have a blue LED which starts lighting up. Once it switches off, it goes off. Now those are the three main things I highly recommend someone to do. It's not the structure, it's it's not the cable chains, it's yes, they make the printer look pretty, they make it more clean, they make it more rigid, but they do not make it more safe. These three additions do not make it as safe as it can be. This is still not a toy, it is a tool and the community needs to heavily understand that. With every tools, there are risks, whatever you do. There is a lot of current going through this. You have temperatures in excess of 250 degrees on the nozzle. So if it fails, it could be horrible. So you have to keep an eye out. Could you do more to make it safe? Yes, absolutely. You can install Octoprint so you can, um, so you can monitor it while you're away. Electronic relays, so you can switch it off what, or even if you're away with the push of button, which we will do another video on because I have a couple of those. But I just want to point out that you need to be safe. You need to take caution with this with these machines because it's they're awesome machines, they're awesome tools, and your creativity flows with them. But there's always the safety aspect, uh, which has to stay there at the forefront of everything else. That is it for today, guys. I. I do hope that this helps. I do hope that this creates a bit of awareness in terms of safety. I do suggest you also look at Preston's video about 3D printing safety. I will leave a link in the video description. It's, it's an awesome hobby to have, but it is 
not perfect. And with the prices always going down, someone is bound to cut corners and I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt. As always, I will leave links in the video description to anything I installed on the Anet A6, and that is the MOSFETs, the power supply that I have purchased, which I have yet to put in, higher gauge wires, any connectors, relay switches, whatever that I intend to put on at a later date. Let me know if you enjoy this episode, if you will be doing any of these upgrades yourself, or if you have done so already. And if you have done them, if you had any issues, please point them out to me so I can let everyone else know. Thank you once again, and as always, until next time, Happy making, guys.